Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Tuesday, February 18th, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, protest in Kiev turned deadly. Then, the Navy describes an Iran hack attack ahead of cybersecurity framework. And Doug Hagman breaks down Baker's suicide. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm never going to commit suicide. Never, 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 never. If I was diagnosed with cancer, I will go with Darth Vader level surgery. Well, the violent protests in Kiev, Ukraine have taken a deadly turn. At the time of this broadcast, 14 people have died with hundreds more injured. It's the worst violence being reported since the protests began in late November. Now, it's being painted that these protesters want to join the EU and evil Russia just isn't letting them. But I would venture to say that most of these people could care less about joining the EU or any of the globalist elites, but rather would fight for what little payment they're receiving from Soros and other EU-backed groups. Now, the protesters are reportedly being paid between 15 and 25 euros. The Assistant Secretary of State Victoria Newland told the National Press Club last December that the U.S. has invested $5 billion in organizing a network to achieve U.S. goals in Ukraine in order to give Ukraine the future it deserves. Now, I guess if she means organizing a network of paid protesters to dismantle the governments that the Ukraine can be looted, like Latvia and Greece, and then Washington can just use the Ukraine to set up bases in order to fight Russia, well, I doubt that that's the future that Ukrainians think they deserve. Now, the average man on the street in Kiev may be fighting for independence from the Russians that have plagued them since Stalin. Against corruption, they may be fighting against crony capitalism, but their leaders are just puppets of the CIA and Western bankers. And unfortunately, what these paid protesters might find when the smoke settles is that the new boss is the same as the old boss. Now, we've talked a little bit about the historical context surrounding the Ukrainian protests, specifically Stalin's campaign to crush the Ukraine. Now, considering the rampant corruption and economic disparity that is facing the Ukrainians, is that something that we're kind of seeing happening here in the U.S.? Just take a look at how Stalin took down the Ukraine in the first place and let me know if any of this looks familiar to you. First, he removed the leaders and the old order. Here we have the feds attacking the founding fathers, calling them terrorists. They're undermining any opposition or reform with rampant election fraud. There's blatant persecution of party leaders and targeting of Tea Party groups by the IRS, just to name a few. Next, he co-opted the church leaders. Their message was basically support the government or be taken out. Here we have the IRS and the 501c churches dutifully looking the other way and justifying what the government does with Romans 13. Now here's the big one that should be blatantly obvious. Divide and conquer the population with massive immigration. Now in the case of the Ukraine, it was with a massive influx of Russians who supported the government and had no loyalty to either the Ukraine, its people, its government, its culture, or its traditions. Now here in the U.S., Amnesty and immigration reform is being shoved down our throats as well as this attack on our culture. It's not so we can be the country that welcomes people with open arms, but so that voters who will support big government and have no loyalty to America can flood the polls. Phyllis Schlafly broke this down on The Alex Jones Show today. These people who want to bring in millions of people, uh, they're going to vote Democratic. And uh, we know this not because it's my opinion or because I've talked to them. It's because all of these recognized pollsters uh, have reached a consensus on this, and uh, there's no dispute in it. These these pollsters all say uh, that the ones coming in, the big majority of them, are people who believe in big government offering more services uh, than limited government, balanced budgets, and that sort of thing. That's a very important interview. Watch the rest of it at Infowars.com. But the last technique, and quite possibly the one with the most lasting psychological effects on the Ukrainians, death by forced starvation. 
Stalin starved the people out with contrived shortages. He introduced a program of agricultural collectivization that forced farmers to give up their private land, equipment, and livestock and join state-owned factory-like collective farms. Here we have the same thing. They're shutting down small farmers, making it illegal to buy raw products from them, slapping these small farmers with tons of regulations, while government-friendly farms are free to spread contaminated food and we're, of course, seeing the implementation of Agenda 21 plans, as well as this GMO manufactured food crisis. But, of course, they say they're creating the GMOs for this food shortage. Well, if you would just stop shutting down small farms, there wouldn't be food scarcity in cities and towns all over the world. But, of course, that's what they do, create the problem and then present the solution so that everyone needs big government. So that's why I think these, these protests, they go a lot deeper than just anti-government activists fighting to join the EU. In this clash, like so many others where we're seeing a civilization finally rising up to overthrow a corrupt government, there is one common denominator, big banks. The big banks that are too big to jail, too big to fail. They're always there. Now we have a seventh banker who has died under mysterious circumstances in the last month. This time, it's a J.P. Morgan Forex trader who leapt to his death from the top of the firm's Chatterhouse headquarters in Hong Kong. This brings the total to at least seven bankers who have died under mysterious circumstances, and it's more than 20 if you go back a bit further. And this includes another J.P. Morgan senior manager who jumped off the top of a skyscraper in London last month. Now, speculation is rife that the series of deaths are connected to some kind of looming financial crisis or a huge legal case targeting bankers for malfeasance, although no definite link has been established. Now, according to CIA manuals that were declassified as part of a Freedom of Information Act in uh, May of 1997, the preferred killing method of the CIA is through contrived accidents, specifically a fall of 75 feet or more onto a hard surface, death by gravity. But of course, you know, these banker deaths will remain a mystery. Now, one thing is for certain, though, and that is that uncertainty is pervading every area of the global economy. Now, experts are already warning that the American way of life will be destroyed. There's, you know, obscene levels of debt. We're giving these faulty employment statistics. The writing is on the wall, and it's really only a matter of time. But what's really upsetting and not news to our viewers, this entire looming economic crisis is premeditated. We are dealing with these self-indulgent monsters who have completely released themselves from reality. Here you can look at Kevin Roos of New York Mag. He infiltrated a, a Wall Street secret society inductee party. And he basically reported the same thing that Alex Jones found when he crashed the Bohemian Grove. Um, he said here that there's the most famous investors in the world, including executives from nearly every too-big-to-fail bank, private equity mega firm, were watching as inductees dressed in drag performed racist, raunchy skits, poking fun at the 99%, making light of the financial crisis, and bragging about their business conquests at Main Street's expense. So he says, how could any self-aware and socially conscious person make fun of a financial disaster that resulted in real harm to millions of people in the form of foreclosures, wrecked 401ks, and a devastating unemployment crisis? But that's just it. These are the same guys who created this crisis, and now they're reveling in it. The world's largest banks are fixing the prices of just about everything in the world, including the economies of entire countries. The game is rigged, folks. And now coming up later in the show, we're going to be speaking with Doug Hagman. He's going to break down the tie with all of these mysterious banker deaths. But um, the question is, should we be expecting a financial reset that will set off everyone into enslavement to a global economy? Well, the answer is yes. And if you need evidence of how this is going to happen, you need look no further than all of the recent reports on how vulnerable the grid is and, and cyber attacks and cyber security. They love, the globalists love to let you know about their new world order plans before they happen. So here we have Obama just 
last week showing off the government's cybersecurity framework and offering the best practices guide for banking, defense, utilities, and other industries to help protect themselves against attacks by hackers. Now, the Wall Street Journal reports that the supposed Iranian hack of the Navy's largest unclassified computer network was more serious than originally reported. They say U.S. defense officials were taken aback by the skill of the Iranian hackers who were allegedly able to gain access to the network through a security weakness. Now, the Navy admits no data was stolen or email accounts compromised. However, the Iranians were able to conduct surveillance. Now, if the intrusion is in fact true, it may be viewed as a response to the Stuxnet virus, which was developed jointly by the United States and Israel, and that was a computer virus inserted into the network at a nuclear facility in Iran. Now, Iran did admit to establishing, quote, the world's strongest cyber army in response. In January of 2013, U.S. government officials claimed that Iran attacked U.S. bank networks in retaliation for economic sanctions imposed on the country. And according to a former official in the State and Commerce Departments, there is no doubt within the U.S. government that Iran is behind these attacks. So it sounds to me like Iran will be taking the fall for any coming globalist-backed cyber attacks. But the U.S. has publicly disclosed that it has created 13 teams of covert hackers to carry out cyber attacks against other countries. And the chief of the NSA said the teams are offensive in nature and will defend the country against cyber attacks. So we already know who who is the most skilled in this cyber attack, cybersecurity game. It's the U.S. Meanwhile, Asia Weekly is reporting that Japan is secretly developing a nuclear weapons program in response to the increasing hostilities in China over the East China Sea dispute. Now, according to the report, Japan has recently demanded that the U.S. return 300 kilograms of plutonium, noting that Mitsubishi, Hitachi, and Toshiba all possess expertise in the area of nuclear energy, and along with 200 other small companies, they could all be called upon to kickstart a nuclear weapons program. Japan already has 40 tons of plutonium in its possession. Now, obviously, this is not a good thing that Japan is building nuclear weapons, but basically they're giving us a vote of no confidence. They have no confidence that the U.S. is going to be around to protect them, much less would the U.S. actually have their back against China, its biggest creditor. I don't think so. So here we have a case of Japan looking out for their best interests. Now, Coming up, the mainstream media has been reporting that the Nazis planned on using mosquitoes as a bioweapon. But what about the fact that Bill Gates is using this same technology for forced vaccinations? And then I'm going to have my interview with Doug Hagman. He'll be investigating the link between these mysterious banker deaths. Stick around. globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. For a limited time, we are offering 15% off Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality. InfoWarsLife.com. We're on the march, the empire's on the run, and the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. 
Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with Survival